Hello and welcome to this Wisdom for Confident and Fluent English in One Year series where we are practicing listening to English for more than six minutes, reading out loud, which is a very helpful exercise, not for a whole book, but for a short text like the ones we're looking at in this series, natural English pronunciation, reflecting on meaning, understanding, and then sharing whatever it is that comes to us, whatever ideas and associations we have. So if you're ready, let's get started. If you haven't done so yet and you'd like to support me with the algorithm, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and invite the bell to be notified whenever I upload a new video which will be relevant to you if you're looking to become more confident, fluent and proficient in English. And if you're new here, my name is Tanya Meyer. I'm an English as a foreign language teacher to adults operating at the intersection between effective language acquisition and use, the practice of raising awareness, and increased levels of happiness and well-being. What's not to love? Another word for awareness raising is mindfulness, the practice of stopping and looking more deeply at what is going on within me and around me in the present moment, which is instrumental in bringing more clarity, understanding and joy to our experience. And it is from here, from a place of calm and spaciousness, that we can really improve our English skills. In this series, we're reading the first 52 short texts from the book, Your True Home, the Everyday Wisdom of Thich Nhat Han, Zen master, peace activist, poet, writer, and founder of the Plum Village tradition. You can find more details about this book in the description box. We're practicing reading out loud in English, these short texts, because reading out loud creates a great deal of connections between our brain and our mouth. Traditionally, it is not popular for people to read out loud in English classrooms. But here in this channel, you are very welcome and encouraged to read out loud with me. It's going to help you create the natural rhythm and cadence of English, which might be very different. In fact, is probably very different from the rhythm and cadence of your own language. Practicing like this helps us build confidence and fluency so that when we interact in our own context, we know that we're doing it correctly and that we're producing natural sounding English. We read twice, the first time with the simple objective of understanding the meaning. What is this text saying? No point in going into grammar or pronunciation if we're not clear on the meaning. The second time, as this reading is quite short, will deepen our understanding. You don't need more information about English. It isn't about more, more, more. It's about understanding. It's about clarity. It's about integrating English with who you are. And that is a practice. It isn't information based. And so we're going to read for the pure pleasure of reading. And after that, let's discuss some ideas that this text brings up for you and for me. Remember that out loud means using your vocal cords, producing sound. Your eyes don't have vocal cords. So produce English words with your mouth as you read along with me. Here we go. 12. 
the wave and the water. There are two dimensions to life and we should be able to touch both. One is like a wave and we call it the historical dimension. The other is like the water and we call it the ultimate dimension or nirvana. We usually touch just the wave, but when we discover how to touch the water, we receive the highest fruit that meditation can offer. Okay, let's read this again together and see what message it is wanting to communicate to us today. The second time, now that you've read it first, see what ideas and associations come to mind as we read it out loud together. 12. The wave and the water. There are two dimensions to life and we should be able to touch both. One is like a wave and we call it the historical dimension. The other is like the water and we call it the ultimate dimension or nirvana. We usually touch just the wave, but when we discover how to touch the water, we receive the highest fruit that meditation can offer. Okay, what is your understanding of this week's text? Practice your writing skills and post your ideas in the comments below. I'm looking forward to reading them. Okay, so these two dimensions to life. I have posted several videos on this topic, but the question of doing and the ultimate dimension or the vertical dimension and the horizontal dimension. What does this mean? Well, most of us live our lives on a day-to-day -day basis. We just get up, we do what we have to do, we go to work, we eat, um, we practice sports and, and life becomes quite tight because we have lots of things to do, we have people to think about, we have perhaps we have pets um, and, and a lot of responsibility at work and so you know things start building up and this can become quite stressful when there's no pause, no break in this horizontal dimension between the moment we wake up until the moment we go to bed at night and it might be quite late at night and then we have to wake up early so now we're sleep deprived and we have a full day ahead and so this is what a lot of people experience in their day-to-day -day life in the horizontal dimension and so the vertical dimension the ultimate dimension as it mentions here in this text is what we need to practice, we need to bring it into our lives. If we don't make that effort to bring the vertical dimension, the ultimate dimension into our lives, the horizontal dimension will keep pulling and dragging us along with it. There are many people in this world who live purely on that horizontal dimension. And I have to say, that I find it quite stressful to live like that, you know, because it's one thing after another, one thing after another. Even when we go on holiday, it's, uh, you know, one activity after another and our thoughts, we're thinking and thinking and thinking and then sleeping and dreaming and waking up and doing something else. And so it's a very busy, very busy life. But life isn't only about busyness. If we have a very busy life, then it isn't really much of a life at all. Life just poom, passes us by and we don't get to enjoy any of it. And this is what the ultimate dimension is all about. Being able to stop and to calm our body, our emotions and our mind. If we don't do it, if we don't give ourselves the opportunity to sit and to practice stopping, training our mind to slow down and bringing relaxation to our body and emotions, then our mind is not aware that it needs to give us this space. 
The mind believes that its function is to produce thinking and to solve our problems. And so that's what it does. It thinks and tries to solve problems. But by thinking so much and trying to solve problems, then more problems are generated. Whereas when we bring the vertical dimension, the ultimate dimension into our lives, then all of a sudden it's not long before space opens up before us. We feel much calmer, we feel much better. The day is long enough for us to do everything we need to do and more. Now we have time to go out for a wonderful walk. We have time to lift our eyes and look at the sky, look at the clouds, enjoy the clouds in all their beautiful splendor. We can enjoy the trees, we can listen to the birds and really appreciate the wonders of life that are always there for us, but in our busyness, we rarely appreciate. By cultivating a mindset that is calmer, that is more relaxed, more at ease, lighter of heart and more joyful, better able to manage the difficulties in life because we're not reacting, we're not reacting, oh this, oh I have to react, react, we're not living our life that way. Now we're living our life in such a way that we are more observers of what is happening. And so whatever happens, whether it's good or bad, we're able to respond to it skillfully. Now imagine what this skill or this ability does to our English. You know, if, if English is, is something that produces tension and stress and frustration, anxiety in our life, if we're angry with English because if we knew English we'd be in a better position at work or if we knew English then our whole life would be better and, and we feel resentful towards English for example, well that isn't a very productive place from which to engage with English and make it more efficient, make it more confident and fluent. What we need is to stop, relax, sit back, observe, and then when we're able to observe, there's clarity and we can see the areas of English that we need to work on the most, the areas that perhaps we don't need to work on. Perhaps we don't need more vocabulary. Perhaps we need a little bit more grammar. Or perhaps we don't need grammar or vocabulary. We need more opportunity to put words together more fluently, like what we're doing right now, reading these short texts. And perhaps then, after watching this video, going and reading something else out loud again, recording yourself, getting feedback. This is what people in my program do. They record themselves reading in English, or speaking in English and then receiving feedback about the areas of spoken English that they need to work on as well as the areas that they're producing very well. Many people, for example, think that their pronunciation is terrible. This is something I hear a lot. Oh, Tanya, my pronunciation is terrible. But it isn't. Pronunciation is really good. So why are you wasting energy? thinking that your pronunciation is terrible when perhaps it isn't. And this is something that people in my program really benefit from, which is understanding what aspects of English they need to work on and also how to work on these aspects of English. So if you're interested in moving forward with your English, knowing that you are implementing tools and materials towards improving the English that you need to use, then make sure that you look at 
the link in the description box about my ongoing English training program. And if it resonates with you, go ahead and apply for a call. One of the things that everybody in my program appreciates the most is the opportunity to practice getting in touch with the ultimate dimension. We get together on a weekly basis and we practice stopping and observing our experience together. We do this in English, we practice reading short texts, we practice sharing our experience. And this is working with language at a deeper level. It's about sharing experience, which is abstract. It isn't communicative, like asking somebody to do something or, or issuing a report. But when we're able to get in touch with our experience and then have sufficient clarity to express what that experience is to others, then we're using language at a very sophisticated level. And so writing a report or asking somebody for information is very easy. And I've also created a free guide, How to Revolutionize Your English, Success in Eight Steps, which is full of tips and strategies for you to start incorporating English into who you are so that you can start using it every day, whether you're speaking with other people or not, and really moving towards proficiency. And I'll see you in the next video. Remember to invite the bell to be notified when I upload it. Take very good care until then. Bye for now.